let's sort out where we are. Farsa Dean, Colford there. This is the bit starting from Park End that we're interested in. Fetters Hill. It's not called that on this map, but you can't have everything. Park End, and we're going to go up this old mineral line up to about here. Then we're going to come back on the other side. There's a bit of variety. See how we get on. Early May 2014. Walking the Forest of Dean. This sets the theme for the walk. We're walking an old mineral line, mineral railway line. And this is the marshalling area. And this is it back in the day. This was actually taken in 1964. But um, there's been a railway here really since the turn of the century, and there was a tram line before that, as we'll see a little bit farther on. We bounce off to the side. Shared route, as you can see, along the old mineral line. I think there's evidence here that this used to be an old tramway. You can start to make out this being an embankment and a rail grade. This huge timber yard now been built over the top of the line. So we have to skirt it around there. A couple of sleepers bolted together here at the edge of the stile. From and to. We're actually heading for Colford, although we're not going the six miles. Right, we're a bit of old memorabilia. And we've picked up the line of the railway again now. Heads off up there. It's uh, difficult to give an appreciation of the steepness of the grade, really. I don't think the camera will pull it out. But, uh, the reason that they broke the trains down at the bottom was because of this grade. There was no other way to get to Colford. So they had to split them at the bottom, take them up in sections, and then rejoin them at the top. So it's uh, quite a historic little climb, this one. All done by steam still. Uh, we'll see what we can uh, sort out on the way up. Heading that way. I'm not having any idea at the moment of uh, how to show you the incline. Difficult on camera. We'll see. This might help with uh, Gain quite a bit of height in a very short space of time. Standing on the embankment looking down into the forest. It's a beautiful day for a walk. Deciduous forest on either side. Look at all this conifer stuff. Although we do meet that on the other side when we're coming down. Hawthorne bush making its entrance. Bit of old rail fence post. I think that's GWR design. Wouldn't put money on it, mind. More typical railway fencing now. But I think this could well be Slightly more modern. I think the port engines would have been pulling quite hard up this bit. Just coming out to a dwelling on our right. The origins look like workmen's cottages. Perhaps something to do with the railway. We're sort of halfway between the two bits. Junction with the road here, leading to the cottages. But now it really starts to climb. Here again for the fence, the original fence, using all the old kit, rails and sleepers. 
still in working order. Just a few bluebells lighting the path. Proof of the origins here as a uh, tramway before the railway. And it holds stones. A few of them lying about here, obviously discarded when they put the railway in. They might very well have been hewn out of there. This is trackside. And although the railway did carry, and was probably built mainly for minerals, they also took out, quarried a lot of stone from these quarries on the side of the track. And they would simply have loaded them onto the rails and exported them from here. This is probably 20, 50 yards from the railway. That one nearly got finished. Rather pretty. Lots of uh, natural fault lines in this, which would have made it easier to get the blocks out and then shape them. Still in the quarry side, that's the railway just through there, and then just of here. I don't know whether that's a natural or whether that's the entrance to an old mineral mine. I think I'll give it a miss though. Looks like somebody's been uh, propping it maybe to get access. Onward through what is mainly beach here. Must look pretty in the autumn. Note to self. I'm hoping we're getting some sense of the scale of the climb here. A very steep embankment. Quite a way above the uh, road now. Well, the road itself is climbing. And then just down below us, you can just make out a track with boulders lining the far side and this must be the original track before the railway was built I would think. Well this would have made them think it was all going so well till they got here there's a blooming great lump of rock in the way. But in typical fashion they just cut their way through it carry it on. Unfortunately, 50 yards farther on, and a slightly bigger challenge. But in the spirit of the day, I just cut through it and carry it on. Mind you, that must have made them think a bit. You have to wonder at some point. I didn't wonder if perhaps they should have gone the other way. It's amazing, isn't it, that roots like that, they look very shallow, can hold up a tree of this size. That's a pretty little spot. I'm coming to the end. They promptly mopped their brows and carried on. Not everybody would have wanted to use the uh, railway with its charges. And here is someone's answer. 
We're approaching a very big quarry now. And here you see the access under the railway. So the line goes above it, this goes underneath it. I think the curvature here is too sharp for it to have been a railway. Maybe wrong, I think it was narrow gauge. It's off through there. Mind you, it looks like the railway had something to do with it. This probably gives a better idea of the angle of the curve. Can't think that's railway. Beautiful brickwork, of course. Standard for the era. Bit of dry stone walling on the entrance. We'll take a look in. Already you can see the light coming from the other side. Few trailing jobbers here hanging down. And then a rather fine abutment on the exit to the tunnel or the entrance, depending which way you're going. Curiously, it's dry stone that side and mortared that side. And that is the side of the railway, so that probably answers the question of why. Quite impressive looking back. Now there is a find of some significance. A piece of old clinker. It probably clogged up some firebox and some ancient locomotive. Chucked out over the side. I wonder if it came from this locomotive. As you can see it's just passing the quarry and the entrance we've just come under, the tunnel if you like, is there on the left. And this is in fact the quarry. The quarry had actually closed in the 1930s. This was taken round about 1947. Although it's getting a little bit indistinct even in this photograph, the rails are still down there. And you can just about make out a few features here and there. And the tunnel that we've just been talking about, now it's moved to the top right. And this is in fact the site of the old quarry. Yes, rather well hidden. I think lunch first, then we'll go and explore. There's a nice rustic old seat for lunch. It's actually look guarding a rather large hole, so this would be part of the workings. Some big old bolts down there, so this slab evidently then is uh, incorporating some machinery, or was. Well, cheese and pickle today, prepared by my own fair hand. Actually, I think it's onion marmalade. Beautiful setting. Bird song's nothing to do with me, that's, that's already there. Just uh, sat here hoping I don't disappear into a large hole anytime soon. I'm sat here having lunch and looking about and there are a few man-made structures here which uh, could be counterbalance weights for cranes or it could be a mine shaft because just there is a huge spoil heap normally associated with mines. That's a bit precarious looking. Wouldn't like it under there. Looks like a modular piece. That's a counterweight of some sort. And that would have been the attachment point. A miscellaneous collection of blocks. And then over there, some sort of uh, plinth. But I'm not going to go too far because you can never be sure if it is a mine if the capping isn't rotted through and you end up at the bottom of a large, rather large hole. Some more supports there for machinery and also just down here 
rather fine stone beams. And just in front of these uh, stone flints is a hole which possibly is the uh, shaft down into the mine. That was when they were uh, extracting the stone. I'll look on for the easy pickings first. Which is just to chisel their way into this hillside. This now runs away from the railway. Partially collapsed. Dressed stone stuck in the uh, pathway. This could well have been a trackway, I suppose, a tramway. To get the stone to the railway. Some nice dressed stone. Don't quite know what that's doing on the track bed. And that disappears off into the forest. And it ends up here, which is an old quarry face. This is what you're left with when all the easy bits have gone. And you've got to get the rest. Looks a bit primeval really, don't you think? The land of broad forgot. Pretty though. You have to think when they were quarrying this, they weren't very uh, high on health and safety. Not much safety equipment. Bit of rope, hang on, and hit it like hell with a big hammer, I think. Not for me, I have to say. That's some pretty blossom, not quite sure what it is. Might be hawthorn. Looks like one of those old Italian paintings, doesn't it? The old masters. Frightening prospect of work there. And as you can actually see some old tool marks, look. Wow. Long time since they were made. Well, I can't give you really the impression of the size. It's just enormous. Dwarfs you, really. So, probably best get on with it, I think. Get out of here. We now retrace our footsteps. A little bit farther along the track is this huge pile of boulders. Difficult to know if it was uh, they were blasted out or whether there was a natural fall. More likely blasted, I would say, looking at the angle. Probably near the end. They've gone to a lot of trouble and not capitalised on it. There's a pile here of partially dressed stone. That order didn't get fulfilled. I wonder why not. A few years ago they went off the idea of allowing access into here. So we fenced it off. People still use it, it's just more awkward now. Fortunately, the tension has gone out of the wire, so it's not much of a problem. And here we are, back on the railway track. And that's what we've just been looking at. You probably guessed that. Some picturesque original old fence posts, split sleepers. And we're headed that way. And by the side of the track, a large round stone feature which has been capped. And over there, a large spoil heap. You would think some sort of mining operation, but a bit close to the railway, one would have thought. Possibly it was a well to draw water for the engines. But you'd want to stop your uh, train 
on this slope, to be honest. It was in fact a mine shaft. And also just to the left in the picture there is a beehive kiln. Rather curious to have a mine shaft in the middle of the railway workings, but I suppose the owners were a little bit belligerent, wouldn't sign it over to the railway, they must have had a good scene going, and so it was incorporated into it. Enough of that. Onward. Nice bit of sunshine and some lovely Monica charged shadows, as we call them. I can explain that reference to you sometime if you want. A long story. We're now high enough to be up in the tops of the trees. A crow going over. Looking down. Off the embankment. Alright, well we're nearing the summit now. And here we can see there's some dressed stone on the side of the track. I think that's as a retaining wall. This photograph, taken in December 1963, shows an engine struggling up the incline and this very spot, notice the absence of trees. I would think this photograph was probably taken from the other side of the valley. We'll be going down now. A little bit farther on. And the retaining wall now has some sort of overhang, which suggests some type of platform situation, but Hmm, maybe not. This is where the railway unceremoniously dumps us. The path, as you can see, turns round to the right, but the railway actually carried straight on to cross the road. And you can just about make out the protective barrier. In this last shot, you can just make out an engine crossing over the road bridge. The bridge is actually about three carriages back from the engine. And if you look out over all the smoke and the steam, you can just make out the line of the railway there as it curves round over the summit. And there in the distance you can see the protective fence from the other side of the road. And the railway carried on along here. Here on the right, we're going to struggle to see through the undergrowth, we'll have a go, is the Dark Hill Ironworks, 166 metres above sea level. That was it in its glory, and this is now. And smoke and noise, fumes, and now Mother Nature's coming back and taking it over again. Right, well this is very near the summit now. Another small sidings where they would reassemble the trains and then taking them on down to Colford for processing and sale. We're going to head back across the road. There's really nothing much to see actually on the summit. It's all rather overgrown now and uh, slightly insignificant. So we're going to backtrack, we're going to go down here to the main road and cross over and go up the opposite side of the valley. A complete change of scenery. Well, more trees. That's uh, quite a long way down to the road. It means now that we have to trudge back up this side. Fortunately it's quite pretty. It's a welcome distraction. Now we're on what looks like an old pack horse trail. It's very steep and I wouldn't have thought this was a uh, railway or a tramway. There are no fence posts or any evidence of it being one. Well, having said that there's uh, no way that could have been a railway or tramway, 
you know, about to eat my words because here on the side of the track is a blooming great hole. Evidently is a working of some sort. And they'd have had to got their uh, goods in and out. So perhaps it was a trammel trackway, though there's no evidence of it. Have to be a bit more diligent in our looking. Although perhaps in the day of this mine, health and safety wasn't an issue. So you had no fence posts. A little bit more research needed, I fancy. Some sort of a vehicle down there. Someone disposed of. Right, nearly there. I think I'm wheezing like an old person. Still in deciduous woodland at this point. here and shortly we'll be starting our descent. Right well we've timed this hardly for the time of year. There across the other side of the valley is the second stone quarry that we passed. But just a little bit too late I'm afraid. Yeah just a few too many leaves I'm afraid to come back in the winter, or maybe not. There are advantages to this time of year. Beautiful. And now creeping up on us, the conifer forest. Statuesque. There's a different feel, smell, and temperature in here. Very much different. Now we're going to turn down here, which is the mountain bike trail. Brave souls, I have to say. And some quite serious ones, I would think. about that landing area. Deciduous one side, conifer the other. Beautiful. And there's a little sapling there, look. All on its own, brave attempt. Well, doing quite well, really. Oh, I just wish you could uh, smell the pine needles in here and the, the damp vegetation. Still on the mountain bike trail. It's a lot faster going down than it was going up the other side. Pretty shots? How about that? No? That? Alright. And here there are bluebells again. Bluebells, bluebells everywhere, bluebells, a dappled sunshine. Hard to beat. We've now reached the service road, which will take us out of this site down to the main road and back where we started.
nice bit of blue sky. There's a sign here that the wild boar have been rooting at the side of the roadway. I've met them down here before, they're really smaller than you might imagine. And not really a problem if you get in their way. Colourful. Right, nearly there. This now leads to the crossroads we passed on the way back, on the way here. A clue, the old rail fence post, and here we are. Except this time. We're going downhill. Oh, hope you enjoyed that. I did. Lovely walk. Uh, now I'm in trouble now because uh, I haven't got a signal for the phone so Pauline doesn't know where I am. So I should be in the doghouse I think. Well, I'm used to it in there. I'll get you on the next one.